Hey everyone, welcome back to another video where I showcase builds from the DIY community. This time, we're taking a look at DIY pendulum squats. Not to be confused with hack squats, which have a different movement pattern and resistance curve. Check out this video if you're looking to see the difference between the two. Typically, pendulum squats are large, they cost a lot of money, and they're only found in commercial gyms. But that doesn't squat. But that doesn't squat. <laughs> but that doesn't stop the community from trying to find ways to hack them into the home gym. Enough with the history lesson, let's take a look. Safety first. DIY projects are awesome, but being safe is even more awesome. All right, we're gonna kick this off with Evan Ball. Now this setup is the one that originally sent me down this rabbit hole in the first place. I posted this on Instagram and I got so many comments from people saying it's sketchy. Uh, what are you gonna do if it breaks? The boards are gonna break, the, the straps are gonna break. Yes, there is a bit of risk that you know goes into prototyping and trying stuff out. Um, I mean, that's just kind of how it goes. When you get a, a, a view of the underside, the boards are basically staying in place with screws, which is sketchy as hell. Yeah, definitely. Dr. Craig Spurgle here with his pendulum squat. It's very similar, albeit a lot less sketchy. He's got a DIY foot plate that is bolted to the rack, so it is extra secure, and he's using Henny straps. Um, and then he is using a transformer bar. I've noticed that in a lot of these, it's really helpful to have some sort of SSB so you have something to hang on to. It's not mandatory, but it is just nice to have. Um, when I posted this, a lot of people were like, what happens if you fail? And in this case, I don't really see a safety mechanism in case of failure. So that, that might be an issue. But if I was in that situation, I would be doing lighter weight, more reps, so you're not really running the risk of failure. Nice like Mike. All right, so Mike is using same setup, but he's actually using a straight bar, Henny straps, blocks like DIY blocks for his feet just propped up. I don't see them secured. So Mike, watch out, bro. I liked this setup and I was curious about trying it out. So here's my attempt at it. People commented, it's a pain in the ass to set up. Honestly, only a couple minutes once you do the initial setup and you know you sort of set everything in place. Uh, people are asking what kind of straps and bands. We covered this a second ago, but they're they're Henny straps. Um, looks cool, but I'd be worried if the straps would fail. Yes, I would be too, but these are rated for 3,500 pounds each, so I'm not gonna be squatting 7,000 pounds anytime soon. We're good. In case of failure, I put my safety arms out there and it catches it. Last comment, yeah, some dudes will do anything but squat normally. Just because I show videos doing this doesn't mean I don't uh, straight bar squat, so eat a dick, bro. Similar setup, he's using straps, probably toe straps or ratchet straps. And then it looks like he's got a dip belt around his back. I think he's wearing a weighted vest and then he's got dumbbells in his hands. What's nice about this is if you start to feel like you're gonna hit failure, drop the dumbbells and you're good to go. What's also cool about it is built-in drop sets. Like, you know, you bang out a, a bunch of reps like this, you drop the dumbbells, and then just go to town for as many more reps as you can squeeze out of there. I'm sure that burns the shit out of your quads. So yeah, way to go. I like this one. Another one of these setups, he's using a TRX system and it looks like a dip belt or a belt squat belt around his back. And then he's got a, a huge platform with a good angle on it. So he's really, really getting in there and uh, getting full range of motion. And then he's holding the dumbbells up high, which is another strategy. Again, you you start to uh, you know hit failure, you just drop those dumbbells and get out of it. So I would say safety on this one is rated at a 10, uh, like 10 for safety. It's uh, maximum safety. Okay. Here's Peej, my bro, Design Build Lift. He actually did a tutorial on this one and I will link it here. Um, if you wanna check it out, do so, super cool. And there you go, easy to get in and out of. Little small footprint, relatively inexpensive, boom.
This DIY by Daniel Hewitt is utilizing a lever arm, a uh, leg roller, and I really like how he uses the strap to sort of hold it in place. And there you go. So it's a short arm, but it's actually, it's a pretty decent range of motion. The question for this one as well is, is it a leverage squat? Is it a pendulum squat? Does it even matter? Like, if it feels good, you feel it in the quads, like who really cares what label you put on it? Um, it's sort of in between, I guess. In case of failure, he's got the safety spotter arm. Great idea. I like it. And it's pretty simple. I mean, it's basically just a lever arm, a weight horn, safety spotter arm, and a leg roller. Doesn't take up a lot of space. And he's got that ATX uh, squat wedge. It doesn't look like it's, uh, you know, much of an angle, but, you know, it works. Here is Rory Ellis setting up his pendulum squat. He's got a, a DIY platform. He's using the Rep ISO arms with Vendetta adapters. Looks like a pin and pipe safety. And stack in one, two, three, four, five, five forty fives on each side. In this video, he's got seven forty fives on each side, which quick math, three hundred and fifteen pounds on each side. Holy shit, bro. And then, you know, for the people that are like, just squat normally. So here's an example of why you would wanna do this. Like he's, that's 730 pounds, not even including the weight of the arms themselves. It would be difficult to do this safely, right? He's, he's doing this in a situation where if he reaches failure, he's safe. He can bail, no problem. But then this is also allowing him to push more weight than he can probably do while squatting. So hell yeah. Here is Evan Ball again, taking another stab at it. This was like, he sort of got got really into this and wanted to figure out like a better way to do it. So, you know, he got rid of the SSB. It's all four by fours. He added a back pad. He added shoulder padding. Um, he moved it inside of the rack. And then for the weight, instead of stacking weights onto the SSB like he had before, he's utilizing his tower, which is pretty freaking smart. Also the back pad, because it's long enough, it serves as a safety. So if he bails, that thing lands on the ground and he doesn't get crushed. Mini Hulk over here with a setup that is mostly made of wood. We've got some steel components and look at that range of motion. So this setup is a permanent setup, which can be a downside for some people if they're limited on space. Looking at his gym, he is not limited on space. He's got plenty of room for a dedicated machine. He has a big enough platform that he can put his feet into different positions, emphasizing different muscles. Pretty clever mechanism to get in and out safely. And then uh, just pulls this little two by four then comes up and there you go. Glenn Beard with his DIY pendulum squat. This is going off of the side of his rack. He's utilizing retractable ratchet straps to not only start in the standing position, but then he's holding the straps down while he's going through the movement. I thought this was brilliant. I messaged him about it. He said, one of them almost cut his finger off one time, so he doesn't love it. He said if they were, you know, enclosed, they would provide better protection, but either way, like, nice job for thinking outside of the box. That's pretty incredible. While he loved it, it took up too much space, and he no longer has this in his gym, but super cool build anyway. This is Eric Johnson. When I reposted this on Instagram, it freaking blew up. Everybody was like, wow, that's so crazy. It's a Lego set for a grownups. It's pretty freaking clever. I've never seen anybody utilize a jammer arm like this. The bulldog pad, the dip attachment, and there you go. That's like, it's beautiful. So then I got it in my head. I need to recreate this with my setup. And I didn't have what he had, but I was like, I can totally do it. When I posted it on Instagram, everybody was like, oh my God, your nuts are gonna die. And like, yeah, sure. Rewatching it, it's like, oh yeah, that does, that does look pretty sketchy. But where I put the pin and the vendetta attachment prevents me from like really getting in there and smashing my, uh, my junk, but 
yeah, it doesn't look good. Here we have Pig Cap on YouTube with a pendulum squat attachment attached to his, it's like a body solid Smith machine. I actually bought and sold a few of these during uh, 2020 when I was flipping equipment. It's really cool to see an attachment for this because I had never seen any attachments for this. I say, this is great. I'd be curious to see how it stores when not in use. I'm like, do you have to, Detach everything, you have to detach the platform. Here we go, he's using it with some weight. It looks like he's added some padding to make it more comfortable, but man, that's a pretty solid DIY, bro. And this is the creme de la creme. This is the greatest freaking DIY pendulum squat I have ever seen in my life. This is Dave, he's goes under the handle homegym.germany. He runs uh, Home Gym Germany Facebook group, and that particular Facebook group is full of amazing DIYs. Uh, this is attached to his rack, but attached in a way that it doesn't protrude off the side. It doesn't get in the way of things that are happening inside the rack. It is actually very, very clever. It's sort of, it's off of the wings, like the bat wings of his rack. How he uh, he rolls, so the handle is what he hangs onto while he's doing the movement, but that also serves as the catch and release for the beginning and the, the end of the movement. And so just a little twist back and it releases twist it forward and then it catches and holds. It's got a safety in case he fails. God, it's just beautiful. So he didn't make this. He got a buddy to make it for him. So I think it counts. I mean, you know, it is a DIY. It's not his DIY, but he was also involved in the design process. It's got comfortable padding. Like this thing, looks like a commercial machine. So when he's not using it, props it up, twist the handle, put it up there, and that's where it stays. And then the platform folds up against the other side of the rack. All right, here he is telling us about it. So I wanted to give you a quick overview of our rack attached pendulum squat. It was a first try by uh, my favorite metal worker. And um, yeah, we measured um, an original pendulum squat to make it um, fit to my nine post rack. Um, and it works very smoothly. I can show you the rundown. So, you get into position. Release, and then you can see how low I can get. And I can tell you my mobility is really crappy with no loading on the spine whatsoever. And then you re -rack. Works like a charm. The award goes to this man, Dave from Home Gym Germany. I love it. So that's it. All these people are on Instagram or YouTube or both. Look them up, give them a follow, show them some love. We have so much talent in this community. I'm so happy to be a part of it. Let me know what you wanna see next and I'll get it on the list. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.